Hello, I'm Johanna DeBracht. I'm from Red Rocks Community College, and I want to show you a little bit about the course we developed for the calculus series. Um, Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3 are all very similar, same layout, same textbook, same homework system. Um, and it also matches what was developed for pre-calculus 1440. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the students see when they first log in, which of course is gonna be the welcome widget. The widget is already set up. Um, anything in purple is something that the instructor needs to change. And then it tells them how to get started, what to do and where to go. The next is a video that shows them how to navigate D2L. It's a short, like three and a half minute video. And then there's a slightly longer video, less than 10 minutes, which shows them how to navigate through the course material. And the last, of course, is instructor information, what to expect, um, what the student should expect from you, um, diversity statement. These are samples, of course, you can change as you like. And then the student is going to start in the start here module zero. So it'll be right here on the left. They start with the introduction. This is basically going to go through and describe the syllabus for them. The syllabus is built into the D2L shell. So there's course information, credits, prerequisites, topical outline. And at the bottom, there is a link for a uh, written um, syllabus if that's required by your college. Um, and it contains all the information that's in the shell. This is the course license and copyright. Um, it was derived from the ZTZ project in California, and I modified it, and uh, some of the work, of course, is my own as well. So the course mode of instruction goes through. Again, you'll see right here, this is in purple because it's specific to Red Rocks. Um, and so you would want to delete this if you are teaching a pooled section. If you're teaching a home section, you'll want to add your own particular home college's portal link in there. And there are some different things down here of how the student can navigate D2L, how to upload assignments, how to get help with D2L, how to be sure they have everything they need, how to create um, a PDF file from cell phone photos or scanning in documents. So these are the technology requirements and the course mode of instruction. The next page is going to cover course materials. The textbook is here. It is available in the Spanish language. It is completely free to students. There is a student solutions manual here that you'll find. And if they click on the link on the section pages, you can go directly to the textbook. You can see it's laid out here on the left. If they create an account, they can actually highlight words, add a note, things like that. Um, they can show solutions to examples if they want to do that. Um, they can also go to the homework exercises and they can click on any of the highlighted links and that will give them the solution to that particular problem. Now, when they're in uh, the module, um, there are lecture notes that go with every section. They're based on the textbook, but written at a more understandable level for students. So this is my own work. And so if you want to change it, you are welcome to change it as much as you want. Just give attribution somewhere in tiny little print. Um, you can't profit from it. And if you share it, you have to share it under the same conditions. This covers what a good scientific calculator should be able to do. I recommend the scientific calculator, the sharp right view, but you may have a preference for a different one. Course time commitment, what they can expect depending on the length of the course. And then the course outcomes mappings goes through the items that are in the CCNS, and it tells for each of these which module of the course it can be found in. And then in the modules down here, the module has its own learning objectives, which are aligned to the course learning outcomes for all of the modules of the course. And... On the next page, you'll see the grading and assessment. So the grades are here. You may not require that your students meet with you. I do. Um, so you may want to emit that. Um, and then as you look at these, these are drop down menus which describe the homework, late passes. They can do the homework late for a 10% deduction, although that number can be changed. There are recommendations on how to organize material 
how to write up problems so as to decrease the number of careless mistakes. Quizzes discussion forum goes through and explains how to post so that your image doesn't disappear um, and how to use the equation editor. This is a video link right here. And then it goes through and describes why we do Python projects. Um, programming has become very standard at four-year colleges and universities, and our transfer students are at a disadvantage if they haven't done some kind of programming to solve math problems. Now, these labs do not require the students or the instructor to know anything about Python or programming. All of the code has already been written, and there are documents clearly explaining every line of code and exactly what to do. Um, and again, we'll use a free online system CoCalc in order to run these, and so there's no cost to students. Four times a semester, the student will write a short paragraph reflecting on their learning, creating a connection with the instructor. It's a labor-based assignment. If they do it, they get credit. And then there are exams. Some of the exams need to be proctored. This material here in purple is specific to Red Rocks. And this is what I include if I have them uh, submit their handwritten work so they know how they're gonna be graded. And then there's a link here for accommodations and what we expect. Now, that's probably the page the students are most interested in. This suggested learning activities lays out how every section page is going to be organized. So they're all organized very similarly, one to the next, to the next, to the next. There are course rubrics for the reflections and the discussion forums, and as well as the Python labs. The homeworks are automatically graded. The quizzes are automatically graded, although four of them require handwritten work, which the instructor will look at. Um, and then the exams, you also have the option to require handwritten work. And they are also computer graded. The schedule is laid out in both this format, which gives them a list of what to do in order with the dates. And then you'll also see at the bottom, if you scroll down, that there is a calendar view of this. Now, of course, the dates are going to change every semester, so there's also a Word version of the document here, which you can download, and all you'll have to change are the dates here at the top and adjust it a little bit for whatever you want to do. Now, the next page that we want to look at, I believe, is a seven-week schedule. I'm working on the 10-week schedule right now. Um, there are forms to complete for the students. Practice submitting a single PDF file of multiple images. Um, a student information form to learn a little bit about who your students are, and then also the proctor request form. Um, right now, three exams, including the final exam, should be proctored. That's two regular exams and the final, though you can require all of them be proctored. This is a link to all of the community colleges in the system, and there's a map so they can locate the closest one. Um, and then there is a quiz right here that they'll fill out with the information of where they're going to test. So you have the email of the person you need to contact to email the password to. Um, most of the time they test in a local testing center. It's not that big a deal, but occasionally you'll get a student who's um, getting their exams at a local library or some other place. So this covers what to do if they don't live close to a Colorado Community College and they can get it proctored by any full-time faculty member at a college or university. It could be at a public library. Um, in some small towns, even the town hall will do it, people at the town hall, the mayor or whatever. Um, and then the proctoring center um, will get the exam password and provide a computer for them to log on and do the exam. The professor gets the exam through My Open Math. If you require written work, the proctor will scan it and email it back to you. And of course, you'll grade it and provide feedback in D2L. And then students don't have to take it at the same proctoring center in case they're traveling. And I've had students do it at different places because of that. This page covers technical support. I've never had a student have any trouble with my open math, so I've never actually used this, um, but it might be useful. And this goes through help that's available through the CCCS system. If you're teaching a home section, you'll probably want to include information about your home college there. 
Now, on this next part, you'll see this is a review module for part one, and you'll see that there are some sections here. It starts with an introduction, and then it goes through each of the sections. Let's actually take a look at module four so you can see how every page is laid out. The introduction page begins with a short overview, um, the topics that will be covered in the module, module learning objectives aligned with course learning outcomes. And then each section page is going to have the same format. So there'll be an overview, the section learning objectives aligned to the module learning objectives. The students are to read the lecture notes, which are here in PDF and accessible word form while they're watching this section video. This is a link to the entire playlist, which is also here in case this playlist link gets broken. They pause the video to work out examples of them. So let's take a look at what these lecture notes might look like so you have an idea of what they're doing. So when you look at this, you'll see that there are lecture notes and they're, they're basically replacing the textbook. They are written at a student level so that the student understands what to do. And they have examples throughout with space for the student to work out. And some of them have the solutions down there. And of course, this is um, does have the accessible alt code on it. And then they go through these, watch the video and complete the lecture notes as they're doing it. That's the primary way that they are to learn the content. If they want, they can also work through the worked out examples in the e-textbook. The textbook does have, if you'll look right here, of course, these links that will give them answers to that particular problem, or they can show and hide worked out problems um, in the textbook. The next section are optional videos. These are specific topic related. So when you look at this, this might be if a student's stuck on a particular problem type. Many of the problems in the homework also have videos or even solutions attached to them. Each one also has um, some kind of applet to explore a particular topic. So this one is by Tuya Dong Fan Yamada out in California, and it covers the rate of change with a rectangular tank. And so it kind of walks the student through different steps of solving the problem. And you can see how to sort of um, visualize the problem right here. So these are interactive applets that are to help the students master the concept or test their learning. And you'll find them on every section. This is a link to the homework that we have right here. So if we open the homework up, you'll see that in the homework, um, the instructor can either do the teacher preview or the student preview or practice it however they want. It opens directly into D2L. The student doesn't realize that they're even in my open math and the instructor view. You can always see the answers. You'll see there are links for videos and they also um, some of them have uh, worked out examples, written examples that are available for the students on the homework. Um, those are not available, of course, when they're doing quizzes and exams. And then there are weekly discussion forums where they can post a completed homework problem that either they're confident they got right or not confident they got right, and links to the reflections. And then if you keep going, you'll see that occasionally you might find one that has a project, the Python project. And the Python project is actually the next page in the system. And this describes exactly how to do it, has a link to the first page, which covers how to use CoCalc, how to uh, program in Python. And then it steps them through all of the steps and how to submit the project as well. On the next one I want to look at, I think, is section 4.4 because it has an assessment. When you look here, you'll see there's a My Open Math quiz. The quizzes are timed. Um, for a certain length of time, and they don't have access to the support materials. Now, when you look, we might also take a look, for example, at section 4.10. So let's click here, and we'll go to section 4.10. So when you look at 4.10, it has the same layout as all of the others, but it's the last section in the module. So at the bottom, you'll see that there are two types of reviews here. 
And there's also a link to the exam and the quiz over the entire chapter, which requires handwritten work. So the students have an idea of how they're doing before they take the exam. The handwritten exam reviews basically are exactly what they say. They're handwritten examples of problems. And this exam review is instead out of My Open Math. So you'll see, for example, in the exam reviews for My Open Math, that they are divided into sections. This covers related rates so that the student has an idea of where to go in the textbook if they're struggling. And then there's one on linear approximations and so forth. The exams open up like this. The student has 75 minutes plus a 15 minute grace period to enter answers. And they basically go through and solve the problem and then submit it, right? And this is the teacher view where you can see, of course, the solutions. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is when you need help in math, this would be like tutoring options for online courses for the um, CCCS. And you'll find links to all the tutoring centers across the state here. If the instructor has virtual office hours, tutor me, et cetera. And the next page is recommended websites for pre-calculus and calculus. So there are quite a few here for calculus one. There's a lot. Um, it includes a video playlist and written lecture notes as well. There are the handwritten reviews, which you can see right here. And if you were to click on one of these handwritten reviews, it would be pretty much what you expect, handwritten reviews. And these are made accessible, so they'll work with a screen reader if you open them in the Word document form. And then there are some metacognition skills um, that are available from how to be sure the student has enough time to do what they have set out to do for the semester, setting goals, study skills, mindset and grit, dealing with test anxiety and finals. And there's a course document repository where all the major files are. Students really probably shouldn't get into here much, um, but this is where you would find them. This is where the homeworks hide. Unfortunately, we can't hide this so they can't access the homework, but I labeled it instructor use only, so hopefully they won't go in there. If you wanna create a page that matches the other, you can use the hidden folder and templates and I would select one of the two. So I hope this is helpful to you and that you understand um, how this works. And I hope that you will seriously consider choosing the OpenStax textbook and course materials for the calculus series. Um, it is an OER resource and completely free to students. And we have had great success with it for many years. Thanks for watching.